I get a lot of questions about how I prepare my beds for planting. I've just written a chapter of my book all about it. It's in the basic section. I'll talk about that later on in the video. Uh, but today I thought I would just give you an example of preparing a bed. So the bed I'm preparing today is going to have onions in it. Uh, they're going to be planted from sets. I don't normally do sets, but I like to mix things up a little bit and compare the results between sets and seed. I did that over, winter, over summer and I think that the seeds won, but there were a few situations where the sets were better. And I'll put a link to the results of that in the description of the video. But I haven't, I've never really done the comparison side by side over winter, so I'm going to do that this time. I'm going to do Shenshu yellow sets, tough ball seeds, basically in the same bed or adjacent beds, planted within a week or so of each other. So that should be a good comparison. So bed prep. So I, I really kind of geek out on bed prep, I suppose. Um, I'm a bit obsessed with it. And I think the reason is because I think that a small investment of time in preparing a bed and doing it really well pays dividends many times over in terms of the amount of work that you've got to do subsequently to get a good crop out of that same bed. So I just think it's worth attention to detail. And I've got this nice little, I don't know how I many, it's nine step process or something that I follow and I'm going to step you through it now. So here's a great example of beds that need clearing and this bed was exactly the same as that uh, about half an hour ago. So let me just tell you what I did. So the first thing that I always do is I use my big cutters here, loppers, pruning shears, and I cut the roots off like that. So ideally, I would go just below the soil level, but in this case, you know, there's a few little bits sticking up, but they're not going to regrow. You'd have to be careful. Occasionally, there are certain things that will regrow, but uh, sweet corn at this time of year is not one of those things. So that's okay. You can see where I've cut those off. And I've also snipped off the winter squash, which is also in that bed. And that's a much easier job to do. You don't need pruning shears to do that, scissors, are fine. So then you got a lot of weeds. Now I take every weed out that I can see and then I water the bed and I take every all the other weed seeds, not seeds, all the other weeds that sort of come to the surface after watering. But I also want to make sure that I'm achieving a few things in the bed. One is that it's really well hydrated because this ground is extremely dry. These squash plants and sweet corn plants have pulled a lot of water out of here. We've had virtually no water over summer or, or, or autumn so far. So I'm putting in this bed probably about eight watering cans, something like that. And that gets it nicely hydrated down to about six inches. I think it's okay below that. So that's one of the things that I do. And there's a kind of sequence to this. If you read the ebook, it's all detailed in there as to exactly what sequence I do things. Um, what I also do is I always put some sort of amendments down. Now it does depend what the follow-on crop's going to be. In this case it's going to be onions until June, then it's going to be winter squash and sweet corn again. So there's no way I can put the feed for the winter squash and the sweet corn in now because that would be far too rich for the onions. So all I'm putting in for the onions is just a sprinkle of blood fish and bone, about a handful per square meter. Then I'm going to put, I'm going to water that in really well so it gets down into the root zone. Then I'm going to put about an inch of maybe two inches of my homemade compost, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, and that's got quite a lot of weed seeds in it. I do, I am trying to improve my compost to get less weed seeds in it. And again, I'll talk about that in a future video. But right now, this last, but this current batch, it's got a few in it. So I'm going to put that down about two inches and then I'm going to water that because it's still, it's quite dry, the compost now. And then I'm going to put strulch on top. And strulch is this kind of composted straw. And it looks like this. And I don't recommend it right now. This is the first time trying it. I would much prefer partially composted spent mushroom compost, but I can't get hold of it anymore. 
Partially composted, spent mushroom compost is great because it's kind of quite strawy. It works brilliantly as a mulch. It rots down really slowly. Weeds hate it. The closest I can get is strulch, but strulch is about three times as expensive. So even when bought in batches, you know, fairly big batches. But to be honest, I take 40 pounds of harvest off every one, every, every square meter of my beds. And so stalch is only a few pounds uh, of that 40 pounds. So I can afford to invest a bit in making my life easy. And I do like to make life, my life easy. So that's what I'm using at the moment. As I say, I don't recommend it. We'll see how it goes. Um, in particular, I think it would be really terrible if you had like lettuces growing in it, because I think all these little bits of straw would you know, attach themselves to the undersides of the lettuce and make clean up a real problem. But in this case, it's going to be field beans grown for shoots. I've got a video about that linked in the description. Uh, they're already planted, obviously, in there. And obviously onions are not going to care about a little bit of this stuff. I've tamped it down well because it's winter. I don't want it all blown away when it gets windy and that would happen otherwise. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. So next step, compost. All the debris goes into this bin and it gets well chopped up. I just use those shears to do it. Then this bin gets turned into this bin and this bin gets turned into this bin. And then this bin eventually gets turned into this bin and this is what we end up with lovely stuff a few little lumps in it a few bits of stalk in it i don't worry about that that's fine i'll leave that in um so i need about five big tubs of that so there's my compost i like to use my hands to level it but uh I got a bit of an injury today, so I'm going to take the easy way out and use my rubber rake, which I highly, highly recommend. As a no-dig gardener, it's very rare that you need anything other than a rubber rake. So I do like to make sure that the bed is kind of perfectly level. The back of the rake is the tool for that job. And the reason I like that is just so that water doesn't pool in certain spots and run off others. So everything gets nice, even hydration. The other thing I like to do is tamp down the edges. And again, a wood break is just perfect for that. Otherwise you do get a bit of compost shrinkage off the edges and that's where slugs like to live. So that's the onion sets in. And I'm not exactly sure how many I've got. Let's say I've got 60 per square meter. Ideally I would go for 70 but I ran out and so that corner doesn't have any but I'll put extra um, seed grown onions in there. Now obviously it's going to be really easy to mulch this over um, but it's going to be a bit more tricky to put the mulch on the uh, seed grown onions and I don't want to plant them through the mulch I don't think. I'm going to try both anyway and see how it goes. So in that little gap where I didn't have enough sets, I put a little stepping stone. And that means I can put my foot on here when I'm weeding, which makes all the difference. And so this is where I'm going to put the tough ball grown from seed. The only thing is to note is the scent on the centers that I'm putting spring onions. So by the time the tough pool will need the space, the spring onions will have been harvested. So that's a perfect interplant. So there we go. Tough ball interplanted with spring onions. Now in this whole bed, I think I've probably got about 120 onions. And that's about right, really. One a day for three or four months. Um, which is kind of what we want, you know, so we start harvesting probably in June. So that's all of June, all of July, all of August and all of September. And by then, all of our main crop onions are dry and ready to start using. So we also have a few in the polytunnel, which we'll harvest probably in May. And uh, 
that should mean we need a nice continuity of onions. We never run out of onions. So there we go, it actually went on really easily, just uh, putting this down in between the onions. Now the issue with this stuff at this time of year, it's all going to blow away. So I'm kind of in two minds as to what to do. First thing I've done is I've tamped it down quite well. Um, obviously I'm going to give it a bit of a water. Um, but what I'm also going to do, because although the onions are hardy and they're quite happy generally over winter, they can get a bit desiccated if we've got really high winds. And we normally get the high winds coming from this direction, so not that way, that way. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a bit of netting up uh, just to break the worst force of the wind on the side of that little fence there. So there we go. I've noticed in the past that just a little bit of netting like this, it really does make a difference. Even better if it's fully enclosing them, but uh, I don't have enough spare frames to do that. I uh, will take this off in spring because otherwise weeds will just grow up inside it. But for now, over winter, it should be great. So this bed here I am going to cover. I'm going to put a little netted frame over it because it just gets completely smothered with leaves from this tree here, like all these beds do. But I mean, some of them don't mind. I mean, the collets and things like that, they don't care. But uh, the, yeah, the field beans do. And this bed will as well when it's cleared and replanted in uh, a few weeks time. So this is the net that I'm going to use. It's currently over purple sprouting broccoli. That's big enough to look after itself now. I'm not overly worried now about caterpillars. We will still get some, but uh, I won't lose the crop. I might just lose a few leaves if, at worst. But uh, yeah, it's full to the brim really now. So I only do that really careful bed prep once a year before the most important crop. The most important crop in this bed were the onions. And so I did the bed prep for this bed in early spring. So I think it was middle of March, I think I did it. I planted the onions at the end of March. So when I replanted this bed with leeks and turnips and spinach and spring onions and carrots and spinach, I, um, I, all I did was just weeded, basically, and just put a little bit of bloodfish and bone down. And that was it, and then just watered that into the bed. Now, I'm just going to pop some lettuces in here, and then I'll harvest all of this bed, apart from the leeks, in October. And that's when this bed will get replanted with field beans because this bed next year is going to be the collet bed. And even this little tiny bit of lettuce here comes in quite handy at this time of year because we don't have a lot of lettuce in the ground. Most of our lettuce is actually going to be sown tomorrow and all of that is gonna go under these low tunnels and in the polytunnel, but it won't be ready until November. So basically we've got a fairly small amount of lettuce that uh, we've got to survive on until then. And that is mostly that bed. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at the chapter of the book that I was talking about. So you want to scroll down until you get to the basic section. Scroll through the basic section until you get to bed preparation. And here we go. Now there's a few caveats there in terms of I do no dig. There's lots of different ways of preparing a bed. Uh, they're all valid and been used and tried and tested for hundreds of years. But anyway, that's the way I do it. And what I'm trying to do is invest up front for an easy life later on. So that's my philosophy. And basically I go through all the steps and I do go geek out a little bit on what happens with the soil biology, why you leave living roots in the soil for as long as possible, why you cut the roots off and leave those roots to decay in the soil, why you try and get living roots back in the soil as quickly as possible, and all of that, a bit on weeds, a bit on compaction, how to avoid it, what to do about it if you've got it, slugs and what to do about those, amendments. Now, the, the guide in here on amendments is just very generic. 
If you want specifics about the amendments, then look in the individual growing guides in my book, and I'll just show you those in a minute. Rehydrating the ground, and then all about the composting. I will have a chapter in the book about composting soon, then a bit about mulching and protecting the plants and all of that. So I did say individual growing guides. So again, if you scroll down, you'll find here individual growing guides. And this is where you'll find ver plant type variety specific instructions about how to feed them. Only the ones in green have been written. This is my winter project. So I hope you like this quick video. And if you've got any contributions that you want to make to my bed prep methodology or any errors that you can see or, you know, improvements or whatever, then please take a read of the associated chapter in the book, which is linked down below. And uh, yeah, give me some feedback and I might do an update. I might even credit you in the book.